So many of us choose our path out of fear disguised as practicality. What we really want seems impossibly out of reach and ridiculous to expect, so we never dare to ask the universe for it. I'm saying, I'm the proof that you can ask the universe for it. Please. Hi, my name is Brooke Krieger, and I've chosen not to go to college. Before I continue with this video, let me just say this. I do think college can do amazing things for people. It can open up many doors for amazing things, and there are so many jobs people dream of having that require college. I think all of that is great. This video is just a look into the mind of someone who's chosen to take a different life path. A path that many may see as absolutely insane. I can't lie that there are days that I agree with that statement, but in all reality, I'm happy with my choice. And this choice was something I've debated with myself since pretty much the starting of elementary school. I've never really liked school. Like many, I struggled a lot. The structure of the system just didn't work for me. As a more creative, hands-on person, the large lecture-like classroom was something that just wasn't doing it for me. I was pulled out a lot during class to work with teachers one-on-one -on -one or in small groups because I was the kid who needed a ton of extra help. I constantly fell below average in various subjects, and though young, I was really embarrassed and ashamed of that. I grew an unhealthy hatred towards school to where vomiting in the toilet at home was more fun than school. And for a seven-year-old to rather get shots over going to class, that probably wasn't the greatest mindset to have. I didn't hate all of school, though. I loved our class. I thrived in it, too. I also loved creative writing. I had teachers specifically want me to read my stories because they thought I had some sort of talent. At one point, an art teacher that I really liked sent me and a few other above average students to a free art class at a local art museum. And even on the rare occasion that a non-traditional creative class had a creative project, I also thrived in those two. To say the least, I was a creative kid, but the second a teacher handed me a test, I was done from there. I was so incredibly slow while test taking, and not only was I the slowest in the class, but I did terribly on most of them. Sometimes I'd think I'd finally be going quickly and felt as though I was testing fast, but then I would see a kid get up to turn his test in and I wouldn't even be halfway done with it yet. Obviously my nervous self would panic because I hated being the last one. Everyone looking at you, waiting, and wanting you to hurry up so that they could spend the rest of the time talking. I felt as though I was constantly getting in the way of everybody, to the point where in high school I asked permission from my math teachers to take a test in this testing room called the math lab, just to avoid this problem. Anyways, you're probably wondering what the hell any of this has to do with not going to college. Well, after years of debating with myself, I realized that everybody has a different path to follow, and that path doesn't always need to result to going to college. College is pretty much shoved in your face for the entirety of your school experience. They make it seem impossible to do anything successful without it. When in reality, some of the most successful people ever either didn't go to college or dropped out of it and didn't touch their degree at all. In fact, let me list some of those people right now. Ellen DeGeneres, Steve Jobs, Anna Wintour, Michael Dell, Rachel Ray, Henry Ford, Abraham Lincoln, Ansel Adams, Steve Madan, Oprah Winfrey, Brad Pitt, John Lennon, Tom Hanks, Walt Disney, Jim Carrey, Alfred Hitchcock, and obviously many more people. All of these people took that risk that many in this day and age are afraid to take. Yet the second I say that I've chosen not to take that path, many will criticize my choice, telling me that I won't amount to anything without it. But let's say Alfred Hitchcock and Walt Disney walked into the room moments after those words left their mouths, those people would be in awe of their achievements. They'd ask for a photo and ask about their successes. And the answer that they would get after asking that question would be, take that risk and don't stop. For many of these people, it was very hard in the beginning. They had lots of failures and didn't make anything out of it. 
but then at the end, it all resulted in a beautiful thing. We're all taught to settle. They'll tell us to find something that's safe, but that thing that's safe can result in resentment when you're older, wishing that you took that risk when you didn't. So yeah, maybe I'll receive advice from family members about taking on careers that we both know I'll hate in the end, just to play it safe. And maybe I'll hear every random middle-aged person who doesn't actually know me tell me that college is the only way to life, knowing deep down that they hate their jobs and would rather be in the hospital than go to work. But still, they'll paint this false happy image of how great things are. So at this point in my life, I do not plan on going to college. Does that scare the living God out of me? Of course. But you want to know what scares me even more? Spending my entire life, time, energy, and money at a job that provides me with absolutely no fulfillment whatsoever. So I guess I chose happiness instead. I chose to take that risk and follow my dreams. That is why I am 19 and not going to college. Mickey and I started out the uh, first time many, many years ago. We've had a lot of our dreams come true. Now we want you to share with us our latest and greatest dream. That's it, right here. Disneyland, seen from about 2,000 feet in the air and 10 months away.